to see you all. Glad you could be with us. Um, we're going to introduce our friend Sharon Parks from Christian International. She's down in Delaware and uh, has been involved with Christian International for a really long time and is a seasoned veteran. And we, we've just, uh, we were just saying before we came on that the people that we've met from there consistently high character, solid, mature, seasoned Christians. And, and that doesn't happen by accident. There's an intentionality in, in uh, CI, but also an atmosphere that creates that because people learn by, uh, by observation of the other people around them too. So welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Thank Good you. To I'm excited to be here today. And uh, maybe you could just give people a little background on, you know, where you specialize. We're going to be talking about deliverance today and helping get people free. And you're an author of several books. So just if, they, if they're not familiar with you, maybe you could just give a little background. Okay. So um, I, as you said, I've been with CI a long time. I moved to Christian International as a widow 30 some years ago. I was widowed at the age of 37 and I was raised up in the prophetic. And when I was raised a Quaker actually in Ohio. Yeah. And um, so I got spirit filled in 1985 and God began to talk to me. So I was invited to come to a faith church. And so I went and uh, I was all excited because I know nothing about these things. And so I shared that God's talking to me. And they said, oh, honey, God doesn't do that anymore. So then I thought I was crazy. You know? And uh, so anyway, out of that, uh, God brought me to Christian National because my late husband died and um, moved down there. And But to go back to that, that thing, um, it was actually an abusive marriage. Uh, he kind of abused and tortured me and my oldest son for 17 years. And then he got saved and fell dead. So God bring, brought me down to Christian International. I met a, a CI minister at an abortion rally and went down there and found out there was a whole lot of people like me, that I was not crazy, that God still speaks. Right. So I was trained up in that ministry. And then in 1996, the Lord brought this a Jersey boy into my life. <laughs> my husband was also widowed. And, uh, you know, he was actually, his background is Christian Missionary Alliance. So it was a big shift for him. But he's an awesome father in the faith. He's just awesome and uh put us together we've been married 24 years so he's the one that he kept feeling like we were supposed to go the direction of deliverance and i'd be like this no i'm a prophet of god you know, <laughs> you know i don't see that and we got three prophetic <laughs> words <laughs> truth hey truth uh that year we got three prophetic words that god was going to launch us this was 1999 into deliverance ministry like a rocket and i'd be like no and then we went to the world congress on deliverance in colorado god spoke to us came back approached our senior your pastors Tom and Jane told them they said we've been waiting for this and we launched the deliverance ministry October 31st Halloween night 1999 at Christian very appropriate yeah what's the website it's Isaiah 62 what, what's your okay. website it's Isaiah 624 ministries.org no spaces yeah yeah well praise God we, we're yeah. excited to have you on and I read your book, uh, Breaking the Cycle of Abuse, where you go into detail about your marriage, and it's very, very powerful. I mean, God really brought you, you guys through a lot. Yeah. And you experience the deliverance power of Jesus. Yes. And brought healing and restoration, and that's what you're doing now, is to bring freedom into people's lives, both you and your husband. So that's wonderful. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so for me, um, as I said, I came kicking and screaming into this ministry, you know, but then when I began to see what God does through me, we call it prophetic healing deliverance because we can see people freed in minutes, you know, and we yeah. raised a team at Christian International and it's still going strong. Uh, we handed that part over, but my husband and I are still the directors for Christian International for PhD, what we, which we birthed, but also I traveled to a lot of different denominations even in England uh, a Catholic Church you know Baptist Church you know people are becoming aware that this is necessary yeah. for the people to even survive and walk out their Christian walk is to be set free probably yeah. more aware now than ever with the five months of lockdown because whatever was in there it's not hiding anymore it's yeah. just coming out on the surface yeah. yes. it's really ironic you know because you said you identified as a prophet and didn't make the connection to how powerful that combo is in deliverance, but it's, yeah. the, I think it's the main thing because you're getting this discerning of spirits 
and the gift of the spirit and then knowing what to do on how to get the person free, yeah. which I learned firsthand from my wife. Yes. Amen. Amen. And see, that's what, um, like, uh, you know, sometimes we buy into, I'm not talking about Christian counseling. I mean, renewing the mind, all those things are good, but how did Jesus do deliverance? He moved in the gifts. Word and knowledge is certain spirits and he cast it out and people say, uh, you know, well, you're not Jesus. I said, but he said, greater things shall we do. And that's, yeah, that's right. We see right. people that are actually handed a death sentence of cancer being healed because we get rid of generational curses we get rid of the spirit of death and all that and they're instantly healed they go back and they're healed right we have we have a lot of funny stories about the early days more trisha than me but as we were learning about all this that you're just doing it by faith because you've never seen it you're seeing the people manifest in different ways and it's like yeah. wow what do we do with this one and the lord just shows up and tells you and humbles you and makes you realize you really do need to hear from him and it, you know, it's not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just throw that out there real quick. Apostle Jane tells this story in Elijah List. So when we launched it that Halloween night, now, you know, we've trained the teams. God has spoke to us, and, you know, we're writing the manual and uh, doing things God told Because some people don't even know how to pray. It's like, just break soul ties. I don't know how to do that. So God had me type up a prayer. It just came because it's prophetic, right? So yes. that night when we launched it, uh, so we had, we had t uh, trained a team of 40 first time around. So Jesus sent them out two by two. So that's a team of 20 people, right? And I mean, 40 people, 20 uh, teams. So anyway, so there's three, 400 people to be prayed for and they're lined up in the aisles. So the deacons bring us up this lady and she shares with us, her and her husband, that she's dying. She has breast cancer. She's turned over to hospice. She only has a short time to live and they were driving around remembered christian international showed up on that night and uh, pastor jane says uh, she leaned in and said in my mic of course some of that i don't remember and she said now don't try to cast a demon out of me because we don't believe in that and so she said i smiled very very you know like i do because i have a lot of joy and i just smiled and i laid hands on her i said spirit of death come out of her and the demons picked her up and threw her like 10 feet through the air pastor jane also says the deacons all go whoa we missed her as she flew by <laughs> and she landed at their feet and so my her husband and bob and i go running over and then the very manly voice it says you can have her she's mine and the husband goes what's that we go a demon and he goes oh no we're christians she can have a demon now let me tell you what i saw too on my peripheral vision i saw those people lined up to be prayed for begin to sit down one by one mm -hmm. like oh i saw one lady the deacons were fighting with her she's like no 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 and they're like stand up <laughs> so anyways what the lord spoke to me is my spirit within her is stronger than this demon and so i bound it up i spoke i said i'm speaking of the spirit of god within her her name is Linda, and I said, and uh, her eyes came back in. She stood up, took her to the front, delivered her, and she was instantly healed. Amen. And I think I remember hearing Jane tell that story. Didn't she come yeah. back uh, a, a year later or something and and share another testimony about what happened to her that night from her yeah. perspective? Yeah. Yeah. How, isn't that's like the best part of all this is there was a person hiding on the inside that the devil was holding back. The strong yeah. man just kept them behind that wall. And then they get free and they're like a different person. Yeah. And they because, can't stop talking about it. Yeah, the spirit of religion says, you could have a demon. Here's this woman literally dying because she's not set free, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what I say about deliverance. Okay, uh, so if you're born again, you know, we'll have eternal life now that changes our eternal life. But if you want the quality of life, get delivered. I'm the head of deliverance for Bishop Hammond and I get delivered. Amen. 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 He says no shame in getting this. And then we opened a healing center in Canada. So we were dual based for 14 years in Prince Edward Island and Canada, um, you know, in Canada and the U.S. Uh, so the first night when we launched the healing center, a man was healed of pancreatic cancer. His name is Terry Gallant. He was given 10% chance to live. And we prayed for him and we cast the devil out and he was healed. I see him on Facebook. He became my Facebook friend, Lester. I'm like, you look so, so cool. good. Yeah. It's yeah. like God removes the veil that the devil had over their lives. And now you see the real person that he wanted the world to know all along. And all yeah. because somebody cared enough to pray and, and exercise the power that God gives us. Right. You know, and, and the interesting thing is, you know, in, in Mark chapter one, one of the very first things Jesus did was cast out a devil. That was his first thing. So it's a law of first 
you know, first in the Bible. But I know in my life, you know, had I not been delivered from many things, I don't even know if I would be alive right now. Because, right. you know, I always thought right. about suicide. I was, I always had, I had major fear issues and depression. And um, when the Lord, you know, really threw me into this and started teaching me, and I was mentored by a woman who was an ex-madam, and she flowed in deliverance. She was a prophet. And um, I'll tell you, it was the thing that was a turning point in my life. And that's why I just felt like so strongly for people to learn about freedom. Jesus came to set the captives free. And so yeah. I thought, well, what good is it if I'm a Christian and I'm not living an abundant life? And so I'm, I'm, we're, we're very transparent about deliverance. I don't think everything's a devil, but we don't that's counsel true. devils. Yep. We cast them yep. out. Yep. And uh, our, it's our flesh issue that, um, you know, that takes longer for us to get free from. But I call it my spring cleaning. Uh, you know, yes. people, <laughs> all of us on our team yeah. are, you know, we all, you know, minister one to another. And, and just we have blind spots that we need to address. And it's time for us to just recognize we are in such a critical hour. And I don't want anything blocking me or holding me back. And especially pride in that religious spirit or confusion whatever it is in this this fear this pandemic that's been released has really riddled a lot of people so how would you minister to the people that have been struggling and i and i'm not shaming anybody i know it's a real thing fear because i've i had panic attacks so i know how real this th thing is how would you minister to some some of the people that have really been struggling through this yeah first i'm going to say this part um that uh i say deliverance is simple, right? Uh, yeah. it, you know, it's easy, but the hard part is walking it out. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And the walking it out is by, you know, recognizing it, you know, that because what happens is it, you know, the enemy first knocks, you know, it's like a little thought comes to your mind. But once you open the door and entertain that, I say, if the devil gets his toe in, he'll kick the door open. And right. that's what happens. People are, you know, people are self medicating. I'm not against medication, but that'd be a temporal thing, you know because then we could go into all the pharmacy and all that. I'm not going to go there. But right, I'm, right. Saying, I'm saying the devil wants to keep us uh, ineffective, right? Especially in the, this season. Uh, you know, years ago, and I heard somebody else give this, um, it was a well-known prophet, and I'm not sure who, recently said about that he saw ambulances coming to the church years ago at CI. God showed me that at least 10, 15 years ago, because our church has a parking lot for the helicopters to land to take people, life flight them to Pensacola. And God told me that the church is going to be the answer. So, yes. right, that uh, people that they'll actually come to the church before being sent to a hospital. The ambulance yes. will bring them to the church. And I, and I prophesy that, and I believe that, and I believe we are the answer. These signs follow uh -huh. to believe. You don't even have to uh, be ordained, but you should, you know, be casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. We should be demonstrating Jesus everywhere we go. Yeah. Which is why it's so diabolical that some churches don't believe it's for today, because it's, yeah. you know, Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. As the Father sent me, yeah. so I'm sending you. Like, you have a mission. You're not just taking up space until Jesus comes back. He wants us to be active in the gifts as, as a change agent in the earth. And right. if we neuter the church and say there's no power today that was only for the prior days, we're missing the main calling on our lives. It's not just to get yeah. to heaven when we die. It's yeah. to be change agents in the earth now. Yeah. And... um uh, do you go by pastor or what? Pastors or whatever. Okay. She's the queen. Okay, yeah. queen. Patricia. 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 She kind of looks like Esther. I just want to make sure. When we were in Israel, I thought she was Jewish. That's true. Uh huh. All right. So, um, you know, for me, I've always battled against the spirit of fear. It's one of the things that tries to come at me because, are you ready for this? <laughs> All three of my sons have died and come back. Okay, wow. my middle son died of sun death cardiac arrest in 2017. The same thing his father died of, and he was married. They were expecting their fourth child. And so I've experienced a lot of that. You know, I've had cancer twice. God supernaturally, supernaturally healed me. See, there's, I should say miracle. There's healing, which is progressive. Hezekiah was healed. Took him three days to go up to the temple. We don't know whether that's three weeks, three years, or whatever. All right. And so for me, I prefer a miracle instead of healing, right? 
So anyways, there's different things like that have happened in my life. So the devil always tries to bring fear and fear has torment, right? But for me, it's from the outside because I recognize it. I like, wait a minute, you know, he'll start with those subtle thoughts. And so that's why it's important to be in the word, to be submitted and committed, you know, tithe all the things we need to do, you know, have God's, God's presence everywhere we go. You know what? When I go to other countries or even in the U.S., I say, get out of the way because Jesus is coming through and it's Jesus. Amen. It's not a prideful thing, but I know after all these years being with Christian International, I know my authority. Amen. You know, being raised uh, as a Quaker, when you've been raised in a denomination, sometimes it will war against the supernatural that God wants to do. You know, it's like, do you really think you can do that? Oh, yes, I do. You know, so that's what I want to say. For me, the spirit of fear is out there, but I had, I've been ministering to so many people, even pastors. Oh my gosh, well, our church was just starting to grow. And now we're, you know, we, we shut down and now we're, we're going to have to start over. And I said, no, because God showed me when the virus is lifted, that we're going to be like racehorses at the Kentucky Derby. Amen. Amen. We're going to go forth. Woo! Yeah. Would you do me a favor? Cause you really do express a lot of joy in your life. And to hear that you lost three sons. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. no, they didn't die. Oh, I thought you said you lost them in battle. My bad. No, so sorry. no that's okay. They, um, they were all, <laughs> you know, and I warred and I prayed. And let me say that because uh, Trish and I talked about there's different ways to war. Do you know you can war with praise, right? Yes. So the last son, he was on uh, life support for six days, uh, two, uh, a year and a half ago in January. So God told me, just fill the room with his presence to worship. And that's what I did. My son, Daniel, that died with the sudden death of cardiac arrest twice in one day. They said they couldn't get him back the second time. I stood outside the ICU room and I warred with the prophetic word. I said, Jesus. The said Daniel was called a worship leader. Daniel, you know, and I said, Daniel, I'm speaking to your spirit. Come back, you know. Jesus. And for my son, Dell. He, in 209, my son Dell had a flesh eating disease, uh, that Mercer, and it turns into septic, mm. whatever. And so, you know, and I have, I have photos of all this because one day my children will write the books and they will, they will raise the dead. So mm. Dell, this flesh eating disease ate the back of his arm, ate a hole to the middle of his chest, ate his side out. It was literally one month battle. So, and this is what we talked about yesterday, when the spirit of fear was coming at me, because the doctors, you know, uh, he was in Sacred Heart in um, Pensacola, and I took a hotel room for a month by the hospital, and I would go, and I'd be on the wall 12, 14 hours a day, interceding, declaring. So I went home that night to the hotel, and uh, the doctors, it was a bad prognosis, you know, the flushing disease, because they operated and took a lot out, but it seems like there's more, and it's blah, 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 on <laughs> the diagnosis. So we don't deny the facts, but the power of the facts is what Benny has. There you said. go. So I went back to the hotel, and... Um, you know, the doctors, you know, their words are in your ear gate, you know, what they said. And all of a sudden I saw a coffin with my son in it. And the devil said, you hear what they said, you know, call the family in again, blah, blah, blah. And so I said, you know what? <laughs> and so I put on Kenneth Copeland. I had the healing CDs, Kenneth and Gloria. I put that on, going in the atmosphere. I spoke the prophetic word. I read the word God sent his word and healed them. I put on worship. And what I learned, this key is for anybody that's listening, make the voice of God louder than the voice of anyone. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that's right. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's so simple, but it's true. True. And that's why you have to know the word because, you know, either the enemy's voice is going to be a loud, you know, on, on, on the volume is going to be on volume 10 or it's going to be Jesus. Yes. And unless we meditate on the word, and like my husband says, we have to guard our altar our intimate time with him, yes. then, then the enemy comes in and he torments us with his lies. We have to counter it with the word. I mean, it's, like you said, Jesus is very simple. The gospel is simple. It's not complicated. And he nope. wants us to be obedient to the word of God and to yield. And if the Bible says that, you know, we can be free from a devil, then that means we can be free from a devil. If I'm struggling with something and I've, you know, one time, maybe about, I, I would say 10 years ago, um, I had started battling severely with depression again. And I thought, why is this happening? I mean, I, I minister all the time. I cast devils out of people. Yeah. And I'm, I'm worshiping. I'm decreeing the word. I'm doing everything I know. I'm repenting. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to show me any root systems in me that's not of him. 
Well, it wasn't, I wasn't getting free. So I came into the office and I spoke to our staff and I said, I have a demon and you need to cast it out of me. And of course they're like, what? And I said, I have been battling this thing. I've done everything. It's a demon. I know it. And why, why now? I don't know why. I just know it's there. I'm not going to try to understand everything. And yeah. so they did. They prayed over me and cast the spirit of depression out of me. And I was fine. Yeah. And it's never come back to that. I mean, it was so dark and heavy. Yes. Yeah. And, and I was concerned because I used to struggle with this so much. You know, you feel that spiraling where you're going down. And I'm yes. like, oh, my gosh, I can't go there, Lord. And they cast it out of me. And so I, I, I'm not ashamed of that. Jesus came to set me free. Amen. It's just another day at the office. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, and we have a lot of those days. The Lord showed me that, you know, that it, it's, we're not an island unto ourselves. We need no. the body of Christ. And actually, sometimes when I'm doing conferences and even at my home, at, well, was my home church <laughs> in Florida, uh, at Vision Church, it's like if I get through the class and there's time, I'll sit in the chair and say, hey, anything in me not like Jesus, please exactly. get rid of There you go. Life. Search my yes. heart, oh God. Yes, do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's just pride goeth before a fall. You know, right. I do not have a big head demon, you know, in me because it's like, if it's there, get rid of it because I've been through so much, uh, you know, trauma, you know, trauma. That's another thing that, you know, the fear mm -hmm. thing, you know, it brings the trauma, you know, with my youngest son being on the life support for six days uh, in uh, uh, 2019 in January, it's like, you know, the prognosis, and, but my sons are all miracles. God brought them all back. So cool. You know, and I keep he, hearing the chorus of, there's a song called, I'm going to see a victory. And, and the chorus says, yes. he takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it for it good. And I feel like he's just singing that over you right now. That's what oh, he's I doing in your that. life. I received that. You know, Obvious because you have so much joy in spite of all the trauma. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just feel stronger and stronger. Through, during this time of shutdown, I'm still reaching out like this and doing some deliverances through Zoom or FaceTime. And... Um, so, but what I feel like God is doing in me is saying it's the next level for these people. It's keys. And I just flow prophetically. I don't, you know, I don't, when I'm having a Zoom call or FaceTime, I don't say, okay, God, what's there? What, what am I going to be? I don't need, I say, I don't want to know anything. Just let me minister prophetically. Just let it flow. Right. And, and then I said, we can talk after right? Because right. I don't want to know anything in the natural. Right. So, so it's like the full meal deal. We cast the devil out, fill him up, and prophesy over him. Amen. So good. Amen. Amen. You know, we had issues with both our kids when they were born, and the enemy tried to take them out. And again, we had to stand and pray. As a matter of fact, for our second child, the enemy, I mean, the doctors, and, and you know, listen, the doctor's not the enemy. I mean, they said that our right. son was dead. Right. But the whole nine months, the Lord gave a strategy, and he said, because we had complications with our first one, and the Lord said to meditate on the word day and night and mm -hmm. prophesy, decree, speak over my body, yeah, yeah, yeah. and call it into God's order. And when that day came, and they said, you know, we believe your son is dead, and we have to do an emergency section, um, that wasn't happening. What and, did you tell me to do, huh? Well, I got a little feisty, and I told him to punch the doctor in the face. <laughs> I said, punch him in the face because you know what? He was speaking death over my son. So I got a little aggravated. But anyway, yeah. um, I didn't do it, by the way. He, just didn't, so you know. he didn't listen to me. But, you know, but it was like, don't, don't speak over my promises and what God has promised and his word, you know, to the end, even though it may look like this, but God says deliverance. God says resurrection life. God says healing. And that's what happened. And our son had a 9.9 .9 APGAR score. He was totally healed. I didn't even, in a, I didn't even have a C-section. They said I had to wow. have it. And I, I said, no, I'm not having it. God promised me. So see, the word is so yeah, powerful. Right. Yes, the word. It's so powerful. And, and it's the revelation of the word too, that sets us free. And so that's really yes. important that we, we get a revelation of what the spirit of the Lord is saying, because that's the privilege and the right that we all have right. to walk in freedom. Yeah. And that's something basically telling me to cut off the voice of the enemy who's trying to bring unbelief into my faith. I'm standing by faith. Stop him from saying that right now, because there's a yeah. there's a power in that negative confession, especially that it was death. Sorry, I didn't yes. mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. But uh, I say that too. I said, knowledge brings revelation. Revelation brings healing and deliverance. A lot of times when we're doing deliverance, we go, wow, 
I felt that and it left, but I didn't even know I had that, you know, yeah. and that's why it's so cool um, to get ready for this revival everybody's talking about, right? Uh, we want to see sustained revival. I've been blessed to minister in Scotland and anyway, and I went to the Hebrides. I went to some of the revival sites and, you know, I went to, to different ones with the Wesleyan brothers in England too. And, you know, and I, I'm one of those people, I'll stand and say, I'll take up that mantle in Jesus name, yes. you know, yes. I don't lay on the grave, by the way. Oh, that's bad. Anyway. <laughs> But, um, but we want to see sustained revival. I don't want to see people being jerked back out because they have rejection, because they die before their time, because they have fear, because they have torment, whatever, you know? So when in doubt, cast it out. Mm -hmm. Well, right? you, just, you just mentioned rejection. That's a big one. Yeah. And a lot of people, I mean, to me, if you're alive, you have, and you're breathing, you have experienced rejection. That's right. And, but, and the enemy uses that all the time in us. I mean, the other day I was feeling all rejected and, you know, and I had to just snap <laughs> out of it and say, wait a second, I am accepted in the beloved. And Amen. You know, but it, one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I know. But, but we, we have to recognize and discern the enemy's lies. It doesn't line up with the word of God, but see, then we have to recognize our identity and the root system that's within us. So maybe you want to just expand on that a little bit. Yes. So I'll go with that. Uh, um, so the rejection, of course, I was raised a Quaker. So even in school, I wasn't dressed like other people were dressed. And uh, I mean, Quakers aren't like Amish, you know, but it's still, you know, plain and this and that. I was probably 10 before I had anything bought out of a store, you know. Uh, but I realized I ate organic for 10 years, you know. But anyway, so anyways, there was always that. And then I was sexually abused as a child by farm workers, but I never told my parents, which set me up for you know, I love God so much, and but I never thought he could love me because of that, because of the shame, because of what happened to me. Um, and then that set me up for looking for love in all the wrong places. And so I snuck out at the age of 18 to a party, you know, and um, met my late husband. And it was the world, right? It was, you know, go to the Brown Derby. Wow, flowers. I've never experienced anything. Only saw it on TV. <laughs> so anyways, that, you know, that rejection, rejection, you know, and even when the physical abuse started, you know, it was always like, what can I do? He doesn't love me. What can I do? And it's striving, performing and all that. So then, you know, I ended up going to faith church and they're teaching me about faith, stand on faith. But you know what? You can have all the faith in the world, but unless you're free, you won't believe that faith totally. All right. And so I, you know, when I, told them about being abused they said honey you need to have more faith and i'd be like okay so it puts you in a striving thing yes so you, you know the rejection there's there's self-rejection where you think you're not value when you say oh i'm stupid and you word curse yourself there is aggressive rejection i'm gonna reject them for they reject me and then the fear of rejection which is striving performance you know doing all those things that are perfect so anyways i couldn't i didn't even like to look at myself in the mirror Hmm. because of that rejection so when i came to ci and by the way they uh, pastor jane and another pastor had to take me through deliverance so i would stay alive right because the spirit of death was, that was another thing i've always battled against and uh so anyway the rejection and then it and then what happens so still i'm a prophet i'm ordained i'm ministering but i still have all this stuff right like rejection and then god calls us into deliverance ministry a ministry that most people reject exactly that's that was my issue <laughs> yes. seriously god you know i say if i'm gonna prophesy they line up by the hundreds but if i say i'm going to cast the devil out i have to run after them right yeah, yeah. This is it. but that's how i've maintained i said god really it's a way of maintaining my freedom of okay. saying, and now yes. i really don't care you know it's like right. i know god loves me i know i'm accepted in the beloved you have authority as well because God delivered you from something and that gives you authority to help other people get Absolutely. free. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where our heart is. I love deliverance, but I want to see, I love seeing people set free, but I want to equip the saints to do the same. Yeah. yeah. That's where well, the sexual heart. abuse has got to be one of the most scrambling things that could ever happen to somebody. You know, when he says he makes the crooked way straight, boy, that's one of those places where people really need to, to get a whole renewed mind about who they are and just as hard as it is forgive the person that did it because 
when you're holding that unforgiveness, which is another big topic that comes up all the time, yeah. is the unforgiveness. And it's hard to move forward if you're still holding that poison of, of unforgiveness, even yeah. though, I mean, half the time it seems like they think that they're letting the person off the hook if they forgive them for the terrible thing that was done. Yeah, well, that's in my book, Breaking the Cycle of Abuse, How Forgiveness is a Key to Freedom. It's about um, the actual physical abuse, the sexual abuse, the mental it's, uh, I mean, when I uh, do an abuse conference, I did one in Lithuania, and they've translated my material in Lithuanian, um, especially that book. But the abuse is so strong. There's yeah. a territorial abuse from the, you know, from Russia over Lithuania. But you know, the people have been so beaten down with abuse. Hispanic cultures, uh, uh, Asian cultures, because abuse is worldwide, right? right. And uh, <laughs> but what uh, by breaking the cycle of abuse, I studied uh, ten top universities in the U.S. where they spent millions of dollars that chose when we don't have if we don't forgive it releases toxins in our bodies so there's infirmity that comes mental illness all this you know it's not all because of, of unforgiveness but a large percent is right. Right. But it's also a supernatural gift if you don't know the lord it's a whole different dimension yeah. of forgiving but once you realize you've been forgiven then you say well who am i to hold a grudge if he didn't do that against me as hard as this is i'm going to let go yeah. And, and, and almost even pray that that person that did it to you will have a revival and get saved so they don't do it to somebody else as opposed to, I hope they burn in hell for the terrible thing they yeah, did. Revenge and all that. Yeah. And see, victimization. You know, I, uh, you know, have a close relative that still deals with the victimization. It's like they're still back there being tortured and abused. And it's like, you're free now. That's, he's, you know, it, it's a new season, but people, you know, we have to understand forgiveness is for us. It's yeah. not for the other person. In my book, yeah. I, I do this quote this from this Dr. Sneed. Uh, forgiveness is like setting a prisoner free and finding out you're the prisoner. Amen. That's really good. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. Yeah. I always tell people, I say, listen, we, we choose to forgive. He brings the healing into our heart. Yes. It, it's, it's, you know, because, you know, like, especially with severe abuse or wherever you've been really hurt, it's hard. And, but the Lord's saying, listen, I just want you to submit and yield and say that you're willing. So I always tell people, listen, choose, if you choose to forget, he brings the healing into our heart. We can't do that. Yes. He brings the healing in. So yes. it's a choice. Yeah. And and it's God's gift to us. And it's got, like you said, I mean, it's a gift for us to walk in freedom. Yeah. And because otherwise it creates a hard heart, a bitter, yes. hard yes. heart. Yeah. And we don't grow and we don't excel in the things of the Lord. And, yeah. uh, and many times people most often have unforgiveness towards themselves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And some towards God, they blame God. They're like, and that's what I've, I've seen through some of the ministry I've done um, through this season of being quarantined is people are like, God doesn't love me. And, you know, God did this. And, you know, um, I put it this way. I had a hard road to hoe and now, you know, and yeah. for me, people don't understand who the enemy is. It's not God. Right. Yes. But yeah. There is a devil. <laughs> well, they have to know the character of God. You know, yeah. and he's whom the Lord loves. He chastens, but he's not, he doesn't beat us up. He's, he's not, doesn't torment. That's not his character. He's good. Mm -hmm. And he's a loving, I love studying the names of God and his character. You know, oh, it's yeah. one of my favorite things to do. And, and he's wonderful. He's our counselor. You know, he's the Prince of Peace. And he, he's there to give us a peace that passes all understanding. And Lord knows we need peace in this season. And because yeah. peace we had a, a John Paul Jackson here one year, and, and he said that peace is the potting soil of revelation. Amen. So when you're in that place of peace with the Lord, the shalom of the Lord, that's when you're able to birth things. That's when you're able to get that revelation to, for the new era that we're in. Because we're not going to go and do the things that we've been doing the same way. It's, we're in a new era. It's a new, new season. Era. We can't go back to the old way. Nope. And so we have to hear the strategy and the blue, get the blueprints from Holy Spirit in, in, in moving forward. And, you know, and that's, that's my heart's cries, Lord. You know, I keep seeing, you know, from when I would say 20 years ago when we started the church, I always saw people falling out in the streets under the, getting nailed by the Holy Spirit. And, and, I, and, I, and the Lord reminded me of this, and I feel like this is a season we're in. And that because look at what the protesting, the rioting, the chaos that's out there, people are going to, they're crying out for something, right? 
Yes. We know what they're crying. They may not think it's God, but we know that God has the answer, not the enemy, not Antifa, not any of that other stuff, right? right. So, um, you know, I like Pete, my husband and I, a couple years ago, or about two years ago, we were down the shore. Your husband would know the town we were in. And we were in a restaurant. And that morning, we did ask the Lord. We, we were just saying, Lord, you know, just use us. We just want to be, you know, minister <laughs> yeah. to people. Well, that yeah. morning, a guy died in a restaurant. And... Oh. My husband and I, we pray, we, we cast out uh, a, a, the spirit of fear, uh, of death, commanded that thing to come out of him, you know? Yes. And so this is in the restaurant, and everybody was watching, and the guy came back to life. That demon manifested. <laughs> it growled. He growled, and he came yes. back to life. Anyway, so that's what God is saying to us. He's preparing us. We must learn. We must be equipped and learn that we have authority. We have, there's, there's definitely warfare out there, you know, and, and the Bible teaches us to fight the good fight of faith. We yes. must learn how to operate in this and discern between good and evil. That's what the book of Hebrews and says, right? And so, That's and good. discern and know how to cast out spirits. You know, we didn't, it, had we not known, we didn't have time to call someone on the phone, hey, pray with us, <laughs> you know? We had, a, it was just an instinctive, right? We, I mean, it's just boom, we went right into action. But that's for all of us. Oh, that is for all of us. You, you know, you knew in, in warring for your sons. You, yeah. It was their life that was uh, at stake. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you didn't care what anyone said. No. I don't care whether you believe. We are pressing through because we know our God and that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all he that we can it. ever ask or think. He's a miracle working God and the devil's yeah. under our feet. Yeah. And so, again, if he can get us in, you know, the other scripture that I love is in 1 John 5, 4 in the message. It says the conquering power that will bring the world to its knees is our faith. So the enemy is after our faith. He doesn't want us walking in our authority. So if he can no. keep us bound up with devils. Guess what? Yeah. We pull back. We're not walking in what God's called us to walk in. So I, I, I agree with you. I think that it's, it's so pertinent and important now that we learn and people are trained up and understand that, that, that you know, Jesus came. One of the things he, he came, to, as I said earlier, to set the set captives free. People have mocked this. Oh, you yeah. know, here we go again. It's a devil. No, we don't think it's a devil under any rock. But when, again, but when you have had a problem and you cannot get free, then it might be a spirit. Yes. And so we cannot, Christians are not possessed, but we're, we, you know, certainly the enemy influences us and whatever yes. wording you want to use, but right. there's a spirit there. And especially, yes. you know, nowadays with all the witchcraft and all the, I mean, that's always been, but it's more so now yes. with all the witchcraft that people have gotten involved in, we need, you need deliverance. And I had to get deliverance. Yes. And even as I've traveled, uh, you know, uh, I minister a church in Laredo, Texas. It's on the border. Hispanic church, um, Dunamis, we would say Duminous. <laughs> anyway, right. uh, but they have a, uh, you know, it's a pretty large church in the fact they have a lot of children too. So I have been going every year and I usually take somebody with me like Tori or somebody from our ministry uh, at the home base uh, to minister to the youth. And we take turns, the youth or the parents and stuff and, do, and then do this service. But anyway, God, um, so the first night, you know, God, the Holy Spirit, I'm getting ready to go. And I have what I think I'm ministering on for the youth part and all of a sudden the lord told me no it's a video game and it's this and i went what and so of <laughs> course i have to bring it up and i say the holy spirit spoke to me and said that a lot of you are playing this game and it was called fortnite i'll say it <laughs> okay you can bleep it out if you want and um anyway and the lord started telling me how it's affected them brought anger competition uh desensitized them to killing and all that kind of stuff and they're all mad and all that you know and they're almost all playing even the youth leaders and and so, but by the next night, it had shifted because mm -hmm. I said, I asked them, how do you feel when you play this game? They start sharing. All of a sudden they got a revelation. Hey, this mm -hmm. is not fun. And right. God just did that in New York City, praying for a nine-year-old. And it's another game. So he is infiltrating our youth with these things. You know, and I don't have to know a lot because the Holy Spirit will just show me, but go in and we need to be on guard because they are being trained up in the demonic and we don't, even, are. Know. Yeah. We don't even know it, right? Yeah, demonic and also also sexual sin. Oh yeah, uh, that's one, that's what happened with this one. It was uh, it, for a nine-year-old, she saw it. It's like, really? You know, I never even heard about it, you know, but God exposes those things, you know? 
So, and with the Fortnite, I dealt with a little boy um, in another state. He's eight years old. And when we said it was this, he got up and started throwing over furniture. And so, but we um, were able to deal with yeah. it and stuff. And it's like, really? And so, you know, <laughs> yeah. you just need to be aware of what is yeah. out there. You know, right. don't put your head in the sand and say, oh, well, you know, I don't have to worry about it. We do. We need to be aggressive and intentional in these things. Yeah, but the, well, the other thing, too, that I'm thinking of is uh, rebellion, because rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, right? And so, you know, there's a lot of rebellion, there's lawlessness out there, and we all have to be very careful, even Christians, like, let's say, you know, um, just what's going on even in, governmentally, right? Yes. And so, even though you may want to take a stand for righteousness sake, we have to be very careful, how we go about it and not walk in a rebellious right. mindset or an attitude right. and it really even curse the other party. Yes. That that sets you up. Yes. Right? Because the word of God says where there's strife and division, there's every evil word. Same, and same that's same. what I see it in the church. I, we right. talked about the mask thing yesterday. It's like really, why are we letting this come in and divide us? You know, yeah. if a person wants to wear a seatbelt, are we going to say, well, I, I believe God will keep us safe. Don't wear a seatbelt. Well, why are we even getting into this? Why are we letting the devil divide us in the church right. with these issues? It's like, you know, we're going to follow the government's rules and stuff like that. And we just need to let people go with, with what God is showing them. Right? Right. Because it seems like in that case... Because they were condoning these big rallies and the protests and people weren't six feet apart and they weren't wearing a mask and the calculation in most people's head is like, well, wait a minute, if you're going to apply this rule and you're not going to apply it consistently, then it's not a just rule. Back to Martin Luther King Jr. That's, that's the most common thing I hear yeah. is yes. that it just doesn't seem fair. We all have that sense inside of us. Yes, I could go back to uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me and I forgot and then he reminded me again. Um, we were talking about forgiveness. Uh, we always have to take away the legal territory for the demonic. And in Matthew 18, you know, towards the bottom of the scripture, the last few verses, it says if we don't forgive, God doesn't forgive us. And he will actually turn us over to the tormentors. And we know the devil is a legalist. And here's where I think people get in trouble. They think you have to let the person move in with you. You have to invite him. Oh, to yeah, exactly. Out, That's right? a good point. But it's not an emotion. But what I found out, y'all are ministers through the years, you know, even recently, we get people in ministry that are, you know, that come against us and hurt us, right? Yes. And so what we have to understand, we forgive them. and We might not feel like it, but, you know, I noticed the other day, wow, I'm released. I don't feel unforgiveness. Right. Love is back. So yes. get out. It does work. Right. And a, a good way we heard from the Sanford, Sean and Paula Sanford was, if you think you've forgiven them, imagine yourself walking down the street and you see them coming the other way. Are you going to duck into the doorway so they don't see you? Are you going to walk up to them and, and give them a dirty look? Yeah. Or are you going to really care? How are you doing? It's so good to see you. And if it's not the last answer, you know, then you might still have another layer of the onion to peel back. Yes, that's right. So you brought out a good point, you know, um, you know, we talked a little, you know, we know that we need to have devils cast out of us. And again, I'm not saying, I don't think everything's a devil. No. But, of course, when we recognize it, we cast it out. But there's inner healing that's very important. And that, to me, is what you were talking about even in Matthew 18, where God will help us, the Spirit of the Lord. Well, he said, you know, you know, the Lord uh, one time spoke to me, and he said, look, Tricia, he goes, you're the midwife, I'm the deliverer. You can help, you know, guide them along, I bring the deliverance, Right. And so, and that's what God is asking us to do. We help each other along and here's what the word says. Well, I want to be obedient to the word of God. I want to, um, you know, if the Lord, you know, I know the Lord says we must forgive. A lot of times, like you said, I don't feel like forgiving because I got really hurt, but I choose to forgive him because I want to honor the Lord. He's yeah. our designer and he knows what's best for us. Exactly. So I choose to forgive him. Uh, forgive that individual but then the lord had there's many other things in the word of god that the lord brings us alongside so i don't want people thinking maybe you're hearing this for the first time that we think you, you only deal with devils and and it's only a devil no then there's there's inner, there's hearts of stone there's inner vows that we made there's soul ties we have to break you know there's a process that god wants to bring freedom to us and that's all in the word of god 
it is. It, it is. is. And like I said, at Christian International, you know, my husband and I were part of the pastoral staff. So um, uh, the pastors were over different areas. You know, like somebody is the worship pastor. So we were over the deliverance, right, as local pastors. But it was funny. I was telling um, Apostle Jane the other day, I said, you know, I'm not really a pastor. She goes, uh-uh, you are. You pastored the people here really well you know mm. and that's where i go in and and you know and if it's not deliverance it's like okay getting them to renew their mind and understand how much god loves them that's part of the inner healing because yes. being raised as a quaker let me say this i was raised on a dairy farm right and yes i can milk a cow all right so oh. <laughs> i was raised on this dairy farm and i remember uh very strict very you know religious but anyway but i remember on a sunday we had let a company come and cut down some of the timber you know and they were going to plow that up and use it more for the fields for the crop or whatever so these people came in and they came in on a sunday and i remember my mother saying look at those men breaking the sabbath god will probably kill them and I'm like, <laughs> i remember watching out the window for god to kill them do you know how many years it took me to realize how much God loves me and he's not that God up there waiting for me to miss it and kill me? Because yeah. <laughs> right? I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I actually went the ways of the world for a while with my late husband because I felt like God could never love me because I was sexually abused and I was defective and all that kind of stuff, you know, and it was all, you know, a, a plan of the enemy, you know, but then when then God, you know, when I went to the faith church, you know, I praise God for the Quaker church, the faith church. I've got a part in every place I went. So yes, I don't come against denominations because I'm yeah. doing all denominations, as long as they recognize the deity of Jesus Christ, right. right? The only way to get to heaven. But we we all have a part. And, and you know, when we go to heaven, he's not going to say, what was the shingle outside? Let me see, you know, we okay right. you can enter because that shingle was okay but if we have a covenant and we serve god then we're going to heaven you know so right. for me i learned something in every the faith church i learned to have faith amen yeah. i learned to stand on the word amen and by the way we do not allow manifestations you know and it's funny because i have a spiritual son in london england he's nigerian and they do a lot of manifestations and some of you know i minister in a lot of different cultures and they let a lot of manifestations on but as for me and mine and the way i train we have all power all authority you're not going to manifest right i do not knock other deliverance ministers no. There's enough demons to go around to keep us all busy. And look, they're all the bride of Christ. Like you said, if they believe in the deity of Christ, it's part of the church. It's the ecclesia, different place on the wall. But don't mess with the bride. You know, that yes. Jesus loves them. So I, I learned the same lesson. It's just really be careful because you don't have all the answers either. So all the, no. if you're living in a glass house, don't throw stones. Amen. We do the same thing though. We we don't allow manifestations. We forbid oh, cool. that. Yeah, yeah, we don't do yeah. that. In the very beginning, when I was thrown into it and I never had training, I didn't know what in the world. I would look at someone, I'd see a spirit, and I'm like, oh no. Then it knew I knew because it knew I saw it. And then, you know, so I had to learn. And that was one of the things. I mean, we, you know, like you, I'm sure you've seen some crazy manifestation. I thought, no, this is not happening. And, you know, so uh, then we trained in our church. We forbid it. You will not put on a show. Amen. You will not have this in Jesus' yeah. name. And they have to respond. They do. <laughs> yeah. Because I believe that that does bring the fear of the demonic. Like the, sure. like the devil has some power and he's, you know, he's yeah. a one of the, he does not. The only authority he has is what you hand over to him. Exactly. And no matter what I've walked through in my life, like I went blind in 95 with the herpes virus and God supernaturally healed me. 20 awesome. years later, you know, I had a detached retina, you know, and God healed me right in the church service there at Seattle. So, you know, it's like, I refuse, you know, this thing, this is the year in the mouth. I will yeah. not uh you know rehearse you know that he's you know whatever a fear whatever don't let it come out of your mouth that's why the division in the church and the and the giving credit to this stuff it's like whatever is pure whatever is love those are the things we should be speaking right right Amen. well the bible says life and death are in the power of our tongue and so we need to watch because we are creating and either we're creating life or we're creating death in the spirit realm 
Right. And it's and, and it's the error of the mouth. It's it, you know, and so yeah. God is saying, "You shall decree that thing, and it shall be established unto us." So God is saying, "Watch, watch what you're saying." Yes. And and even this month is is still the month of Av, where and that's yes. when the Israelites right went in and they gave a negative report because they focus only on the giants and not on the promises of the Lord. And and even in this time, day and age we're in, we have to be very careful about what we're seeing. What is the spirit of the Lord saying? You know, not carnally, not, not right. yes, we, we have to look in the natural, but yes. but that's not my bottom line. It's like, okay, God, now what do you say about this? Yeah. And my son, you know, um, my middle son that's married um, with four children, he said, mom, you know, he goes, I just, you know, everything's so bad and, you know, finances and I'm not working. What am I going to do? And I said, you have what you say i said daniel watch your mouth right. do not agree with it i understand once again not denying the facts so, right, but god is gonna break through and he did get his stimulants and he did get his unemployment but it took forever you know but it took for him a long time and uh, it's like daniel watch what you speak right we have a son that's doing um re cancer research and it's around the immune system and i've learned so much spiritually from what he has learned in the natural about how important it is to have a strong immune system. It's a hot topic in, in the whole world today, right? Because it's the coronavirus. And, and by not speaking negative things, you're, not, you're, you're keeping yourself strong. By having an altar in the morning and, and getting on your knees and saying, I need your help today, Lord, 24 seven. I don't wanna to try to do this on my own. Yeah. Then, then the Holy Spirit will act as that guard on your mouth to not speak that negative thing. But if, if you're, in a war, you have to know how to use your weapons. You, you, you can't just think that these are all minor things. It's, you know, we also believe in the decade of the decree because pay is 5780. Well, yeah. what's coming out of your mouth? Are you going to weaken your immune system or strengthen it? Are you going to yeah. change the atmosphere for the yeah. kingdom or are you going to tap into the culture yeah. and the fear in the culture? And let me say this too. So I also <laughs> had cancer twice. One time, uh, in or out, when in doubt, cut it out, and they did. But the second year, they found a mass in my left breast. Not even the second year. Actually, two weeks. What am I saying? Two weeks to the day, I was laying on the operating table because when they removed the other, they found this. And uh, so anyways, my husband's late wife died of breast cancer. But here's what my husband kept declaring over me. You know, the devil can't kill you. The devil can't kill you. He didn't say, oh my gosh. Oh, so and, you know, they went in and there was nothing there. There you go. Nothing yeah. there. So it showed me it, it, it's power. It's power. Amen. It really is. Am I going to agree with what the doctors say, you know? And they left a titanium locator. And I said, it'll never be there again because God told me it would never be there again. Amen. Wow. Amen. You know? Wow. So watch your mouth and, and renew your mind. Take out that old filter of, um, of who you think God is. If you think, you know, you have to be perfect or whatever. He loves me good, bad, and ugly. And I'm telling you, I do mess up a lot. <laughs> but he still loves me. And I know the love of the Father now. You know, right. yeah. and and God sent me this husband also that loves me good, bad, and ugly. We've been married 24 years. He supports me in ministry. He's not jealous of my anointing. He you know promotes me in all things. Uh, he's strong, but yet he loves me. And right. me, I really got to see in the natural how God is unconditional. Yeah. What a gift! Amen. Amen. Just, amen. It's a beautiful amen. gift. Yeah. Well, when we get back to <clears throat> excuse me having meetings again, we'd love to have you come and speak and. Thank and you. work with our people because it's, it's a good varied diet. You know, when you get a lot of different perspectives, we've all had a different narrative in our lives of how God got us free. Yes. And it just it releases a power when you have your authority that you bring. Trisha grew up in a rough environment and that gave her the background really for deliverance. Um, because again, what the devil meant for evil, God will turn around for good. Else yeah, I just wanted to com make a comment um, about, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, warfare. So like what you were saying about renewing our mind, removing the old and, you know, and, and bringing the new. What, for those who might be inexperienced, and this may be your first time hearing even about warfare, how the devil fights is he whispers the lies. Because mm -hmm. really the battlefield, like Joyce Myers wrote that book, is truly in our mind. Absolutely. So when you hear a lie... That's why you must know what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. When you hear you're not good enough, they don't like you. So yes. you counter it with the word. You right. counter it with the scripture. No, the Lord says, 
you know, I'm accepted and the beloved. You may not feel it because you mentioned that before. You may not feel loved at that moment, but that's how you you develop right. a strength. Your spiritual immune system is developed mm -hmm. so that you're not then taking the lies in and then what does it do you you feel extremely defeated and hopeless right so yeah. that's one of the ways you war and and as you build your your immune system up your spiritual immune system yeah. you will constantly get strengthened to the point where even when he tries to shoot that arrow at you and it you, you intercept it like this with the word or, he, or it's like oh stop it you know and, and right. you don't you don't you don't grab hold of it and and that's that's doable that's what the, that's what the word does right Right, it's a form of deliverance yeah, yeah. too. And that's why I said, <laughs> when you said stop it, I, I tell people when I teach, I said two most important words you need to learn in deliverance. And they're all like, is it Hebrew, is it Greek, what is it? I said, no, I'll say it in English, shut up. Right. <laughs> you know, just yes. yeah, shut up. Yeah, John, yeah. Yeah. John Wimber did a teaching on the, on the complicated prayers of Jesus, come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. And so I tell people, Everything you have need of is right That's here right. from Genesis right. to Revelation, you know, yeah. and it is knowing the word. It doesn't, you know, oh, I'm, I don't know if I have the authority. When Jesus died on the cross and went to sit at the right hand, yeah, right. he, he released it. He doesn't have to be a pastor because once again, Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow those who believe. Just a everyday believer can cast right. out devils. It's not. Well, I'll, I'll throw out one more thing about our, what our son found out is that you can do things to strengthen your immune system, but you can also do things to weaken it. Right. And one of the facts they're finding out with cancer is it can't live without sugar. Okay, so uh, uh. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you translate that into the spiritual realm, <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I'm not trying to bring anybody down. I'm trying to no, spiritualize no, it. Yeah, it's God. <laughs> but, uh, the point is, I think, you know, when Jesus said, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part in me. He was saying, you really have to be careful what you're willing to put in your mouth. And, you know, we got, I'm sure they got freaked out because they didn't know what it meant. But he was saying communion. You know, it was through a lie that all the sin came into the world in the first place. Eve, yeah. Adam and Eve both believed a lie and they took that fruit and ate. But when you eat of him, when you're eating the word, when you're renewing your mind, yeah. you're blocking out all of the counterfeits that taste good. You know, in, in this case, the sugar you know, analogy. But, but after you... I've been off it for a while now. I don't even miss it, you know? So that's the thing. You get so conditioned to thinking like the world thinks and to looking to Facebook or Instagram or how can I just get a quick fix when really, you know, just have this engaging relationship with the word of God, read different translations, listen to good preaching yes. so that you're, you're under the anointing. Your mind won't want to go to those counterfeits, but it just takes time to recondition, eat his body, drink his blood meaning get your nourishment from the Lord and yes. you'll, you'll be so much better off in the long run if you could just discipline yourself to do those things. Yeah. And see, even like with, with Sharon Ashel, Apostle Tom and Jane and Bishop, you know, they've been doing um, the live feeds and doing communion. And um, so we did the communion for the first couple of weeks with them. And then I was busy and doing other things, you know, traveling. But um, what I did is uh, when this, there was a virus at the church we attended at the time and uh so i i told my husband let's do communion again so we did it for a few days and our tests came back negative yeah. you know, um, it's not a formula but it's scripture no. word <laughs> but, it's a, but you also can use your body you know i beseech you therefore brethren you know this uh, i'm sorry i'm now i'm misquoting it because i'm trying too hard to remember it offer your bodies as a living sacrifice to the lord right. so if you start on your knees in the morning and take communion first you're saying right off the bat, I know my flesh is weak, but my spirit yes. is willing, Lord. So as I break this bread, I'm reminding myself that my flesh is weak, but that you have the power, that you gave me the yes. power, and I'm forgiven. So keep me from evil. Help me avoid all the landmines that the devil's going to put in my way today. I don't want to sin with my mouth. I don't want to sin with my body. Yes. That doesn't mean you're perfect, but at least you're saying I acknowledge that I need you right now. That's not a crutch. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you know, it has been, um, 
you know, for me, uh, I, I feel like during this quarantine time, uh, and you know, not, you know, we were once the, some of the churches were allowed to meet again, but you know, I just feel like God's done more in me. I praise God for it. I'm not unhappy about it. I was, I've seen him provide because I'm a traveling itinerant minister. So I hadn't been traveling for months and, but God brought finances in, you know, supernaturally. And it's like, wow, God, you know, uh, it's just, it touches my heart that I don't even have to speak it. He knows it. Yeah. Now, yeah. and he's taking yeah. care of my family and i've seen the breakthrough you know in in some areas in my family and i i just i don't know i'm just really i'm at peace i i'm excited i'm i am ready to go <laughs> you know i was in new york city um two weekends ago so i enjoyed that but i'm also able to reach out like this how awesome is this it really is amazing technology you know? yes so uh, I'm awesome. just, uh, you know, God doesn't do anything. He does it on purpose. You know, he's purposeful yeah. what he does. And we yeah. need to be the same. So anybody listening out there, you need to understand deliverance is easy. Deliverance is simple. Get free for the season you're in so that you're not pulled off, you know, what God wants mm -hmm. you to do, you know. Do you mind just praying over the audience for peace yeah. and joy? Because yeah. you're clearly operating in, the, in both of those. And um, you've yeah. got authority in that area. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for those that are watching, Lord God. And, Father, even some of them that are uh, especially dealing with the spirit of fear and trauma. I break up all fear, all trauma, because you said perfect love cast out fear. So I release your perfect love over them. I thank you in this season, Lord God, you're going to become more real to them, more tangible to your presence, Father, around them. And, Father, even where some of them are struggling with the virus, they've got a bad report and they're physically not feeling well. I speak to the spirit of infirmity and I pull it up and out and I say go now and I release the healing you sent your word and heal them father so I send your word father to heal them now in Jesus mighty name and father any um, witchcraft or occult that is operated even through the airways of things they've watched games they've played I cut that off too father in Jesus name we repent for that and father it has no effect on their physical body in Jesus name and their mental body father in Jesus name and father even where there's been anger and strife and division, even in churches over the mast and all that kind of stuff and uh, no social distancing, even in stores. I just break off the spirit of anger, rage and rebellion now in Jesus name. And I lose a perfect peace. Father, you told me two weekends ago when I was in New York City that joy is the medicine for the coast, yes. Lord God. And laughter do it good like a medicine. So I release the laughter, I release the joy, I release the peace that passes understanding, Father. And you gave me Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. And it's my scripture. Stayed on me. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. So good to spend time amen. with you, Sharon. Thank you so Thank much. You. It was like uh, a refreshing drink yes. on yes. a hot day. Amen. To be with you.